Hello. Today we are looking at the Sir PT15 IR, which is the signature amp for Pete Thorne. Uh, it's a smaller version of his PT100 amp. And what makes it special is that it has the capability of plugging in directly, uh, directly into a PA, directly into your recording uh, setup at home. And you can even unplug the speaker and it won't explode in your face. So it's a 15 watt amplifier, amplifier head with two 6v6 power tubes in there, which are, I believe are particularly good for lower powered amps, such as this at 15 watts. It has the Sir reactive load built in. So they've managed, the people at Sir have managed to shrink the Sir reactive load down and stuff it inside this small little package. So it's one unit as opposed to two units, which is where, it's, uh, where it gets its special power from. On the back, there are two speaker outputs. Uh, one which is normal, which is the, the one with the red ring around it. And the other one just above that allows you to run the reactive load in parallel, which essentially brings the volume down uh, quite a bit. I think it's about 3 dB. It's noticeable. The PT15 also allows you to load impulse responses, also known as IRs, which you can load through this section here there's two buttons here, one for banks, which is the uh, the top, uh, the blue light at the top, which you might be able to see. If I press the button, it switches between the four different banks and then back to the first bank again. And then the next button uh, switches between uh, the your particular IR within that bank. Third one, fourth one, first one, I think we were on the second one. And the cool thing is you can save these per channel which it has, of which it has three. So I think I've actually done this. So channel one, I've got bank one, cab two. If I switch channel, which is the button right underneath here. Yeah. So channel two is uh, bank one, cab one. And if I go to channel three, it is bank one, cab three, or IR three. Yeah, three channels. First channel's clean. And I believe the second and third channels are identical. Um, but this is where the IR thing comes in useful. So if you are using the IRs on here, you can have your channel two is maybe your rhythm sound and maybe ha and maybe your lead sound can be on channel three, which maybe the only difference you want to have is a different cab. You can do that, which is great. What most people will do, which is what I've what I've done when I've used this, is obviously ch a channel one is clean, channel two is like a crunch rhythm sound, and then channel three will be your lead sound. So you whack the gain up um, and change the cab if you want if you're using IRs. Still my guitar. Um, obviously, if you're using a cab, using a cab with this, you're not going to notice the IRs if you're not on in-ears. So channel one, we have bass and treble. We have a gain knob and a level knob. I think they're pretty self-explanatory. No, no, um, no middle knob. You also have a bright switch.
Channel two, we have a uh, free band EQ this time, bass, middle, treble. And we also have the uh, gain and level and also the bright switch. Channel Channel 3, it shares the, the three band EQ from channel 2, so it's the same EQ. Uh, also has a gain knob and the level knob and the uh, and its own bright switch. You also have a master volume and a presence knob, a master presence.
Another cool feature that this amp has is a headphone amp. So you can plug headphones into this if you wanted to. You can also plug your phone into it. It's got an auxiliary in, so if you wanted to plug a phone or, or a laptop or an iPad into there, you can do that and jam some backing tracks or listen to some songs that you might be learning. Uh, I'm not sure if I'd use that myself, to be honest. I mean, the blurb is that you would take it to your hotel room or maybe take it backstage before a gig and practice, which I guess you can do. Uh, I probably wouldn't bother doing that myself, but if, if you're someone who does that, well, hey. Right, on the back, we have the IEC uh, input for your power. We have two speaker outs. The red one here is st standard uh, speaker out to go to your to your cab. This one uh, on above it is the one that goes parallel with the reactive load, which brings the volume down, and it really does make a difference. So when I first started using this amp into a cab, I plugged into the top one, so it was a lot quieter. Um, I was actually afraid to plug into the red one because it had a bit of red there. So I thought, oof, red, red means danger. So for the first few days, I just used the top uh, output. And when I plug, when I did decide to plug into the uh, into the red output, the full full power, it really makes a difference. It has a lot more bottom end. Really can really feel that thump, especially when you've got a couple of speakers, um, when you're playing through a couple of speakers. We have the effects loop here, send and return. The foot switch, which uses a TRS cable, um, which I believe this comes with a foot switch. You can also plug it into any kind of switch you might have, which uses a, a, T, a TRS connection. And then we have a uh, line out, which if you are plugging into your computer or if you're plugging into a PA, this is what you'll be plugging out of. Some people might be used to having uh, an XLR output there, which, uh, you, which you might expect. Uh, here, they've decided to go with the TRS out instead. Um, I think they deemed it to be more what most guitarists would do. Personally, I'd, I'd go um, XLR myself, but this is fine. You can you can plug into an XLR cable with a converter. It's bought one of these, reasonably cheap. Um, and yeah, you can plug your, you can plug the, the TRS jack bit into, into, into the uh, TRS out, and then your XLR cable will plug into that. And then you have this switch here, which bypasses whether your IRs are on or off. So if you don't want to use your uh, your IRs, push it in and your IRs are turned off. Um, and then USB, if you want to upload your own um, impulse responses to the amp. <laughs> There you have it. That's what the Sir PT15 IR sounds like. You can actually get a version of this without the IRs. I think it's slightly cheaper. Uh, last I checked, I think the pricing was um, in the UK anyway. I think the head is about two and a half thousand pounds. I have seen it higher, but I think that was. I think it might have come down a little bit in price. Um, the non-IR version wasn't much less expensive. I think it was about two two thousand four hundred or thereabouts. One of the other things I like about it, it's very light. 
I can't quite lift it up with one arm, but that might just be me not being particularly strong. But it's it's a very light amp. I'd happily cart this around. And if you're someone who does a lot of gigs, carrying gear around is a bit of a pain sometimes. So having this being quite light is, is definitely a plus. If you're someone who does gigs on, on in-ears a lot, this is great. Any kind of amp where you're using uh, in-ear monitors uh, so you can go in direct is great. So a lot of people use Kempers and Helix, Helixes, Helices, is that the plural of Helix? This is definitely a contender. So wh why would you go for something like this over, say, a Kemper or a Helix or an Axe Effects? This has real tubes in it. So a lot of guitarists will like the sound and the feel, I guess, of having real tubes in their amp. Uh, as, as wonderful as the Kemper and Helix and so on are, which I actually use myself for most, most of my gigs, this definitely has that authentic sound and feel of an amp because it is a real amp. So the only digital part really is the uh, impulse response section, which doesn't seem to suffer as much as, uh, as, as modeling or profiling the front end of the amp. That being said, as I said, the Helix and Kemper and so on, they sound great. And in most cases, you might tell the difference. Your audience, your audience isn't going to know though. Actually, speaking of the Helix, I did a gig with this and I used it with my Helix. Sounded great. really well you can channel switch that was the only problem I had actually was switching the channels on this smoothly there's a couple of times where it didn't quite work I managed to figure it out um, and once you've got that figured out it's fantastic uh, but bear that in mind it can get a little fiddly with the um, uh, in, in terms of the you know the the, in, the ins and outs the the setting up it can can be a little bit fiddly if you're not that way inclined so it's not the cheapest amp you know if you've got the money to spend it I'd say go ahead by it. it's fantastic. The other amp I'm looking at, which might possibly rival this one in terms of its functionality, is the uh, the Rev D20. They also have the G20, which is the I think is more aimed for metal. It's got two channels and has a, has the um, kind of distortion channel. Um, but the D20 I think is more focused on clean and blues type playing. With you know, it's like more of a it's a more of a pedal platform. So I'd, l I'd love to get my hands on one of those and try that out. And it's smaller as well and has uh, two notes. Um, reactive load built in. Those two amps are kind of comparable in, in, in terms of functionality. But would I recommend this amp? Absolutely. It's, it's amazing. I'm, I'm sad that I have to actually give it back to my friend who I lent it from. During lockdown it's been great because I've managed to keep hold of this amp. I was, I was meant to borrow it for one gig uh, and then lockdown happened and I've, I've had it ever since. But I've got to give it back um, soon. So, But I'm glad that I've had a chance to play it extensively and I love it. It's great. Only thing I'd like to do is to try it with it with the, with the matching cab, matching two by twelve cab. Was it two by twelve? I can't remember now. But the matching cab, I'd like to definitely like to try that out. Try this amp out with. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed listening to the Sir PT15 IR. Uh, let me know what you think of it. Do you like it? Is there something better out there? Would you prefer this to something more digital, or do you still prefer the digital route? Let me know in the comments below. Any questions you have, let me know as well. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and I'll see you in the next video.